Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 10 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating how to approach stent loss. The patient was an elderly man who presented with unstable angina. Three months prior, he had presented with inferior ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and he was treated with PCI of the right coronary artery, whereas later on he had an attempt for PCI of an LAD CTO that was unsuccessful. Upon presentation, the patient was found to have both instant stenosis within the previously placed proximal right coronary stents, but also disease in the distal right coronary artery and also immediately proximal to the PDA and PLV bifurcation. Those lesions appear to be significant, but uh, we confirmed with uh, IFR, which was 0.77, and when we pulled the wire back, there was remaining good equalization. We therefore decided to proceed with PCI of the right coronary artery. The patient was not a candidate for coronary bypass graft surgery. To do this, we used the innate friends AL1 guide cutter that provides good support. We were able to wire easily with the workhorse guide wire and then perform some redilatations of the distal and proximal right coronary artery lesions. However, while attempting to deliver a stent, we had difficulty delivering it past the proximal right coronary artery and also had difficulty retrieving it back into the guide. Eventually, the balloon came back, but once we looked at the balloon that came up, it did not have the stent and the stent was actually crumbled at the distal edge of the guiding catheter. So we have here a case of stent loss and the mechanism is usually deformation of the stent during attempts to deliver the stent, sometimes there is deformation of the stent struts, and then when the stent is being retrieved into the guide catheter, this deformed part can get caught into the guide catheter, and then pulling it back, the balloon can come back, but the stent remains actually within the coronary artery. What to do next? Overall, for stent loss, there are two key approaches. One is to try to get the stent out. The second is to leave the stand where it is and instead deploy it or crush it with another stand. And sometimes the attempt of not retrieving but just leaving it in place and deploying or crushing may actually be the better one. If we decide to retrieve, the most common and simplest technique is that of the small balloon in which a small 1.5 or 1.2 balloon is advanced through the, the lost stand. The balloon is then inflated and then it's pulled back hopefully taking with it the lost stand back into the guiding catheter. In this particular case, we could not advance a balloon through the stand strut, but the difference in this case was that we actually had um, some part of the stand that was actually inside the guiding catheter. Fortunately, the patient was stable. We didn't have any issues with the blood flow in the right coronary artery and was hemodynamically stable. And having that is always nice because it does not require urgent movement that can result in more complications. So there was time to breathe and actually think what is the best plan. What we decided to do next is confirm that there was actually stand inside the guide. So we did intravascular ultrasound that showed that there was part of the stand inside the guiding catheter. After doing that, we advanced a small balloon inside the guided catheter all the way to the tip and we inflated it up to 20 atmospheres. And after doing that, we were then able, under fluoroscopy, to remove the guiding catheter with the stand remaining on the guiding catheter, as seen over here. And then the stand, together with the guiding catheter and the inflated balloon, could then be retrieved all the way into the common femoral artery and outside the body. And this is how it looked like. This is the guiding catheter and this is the stem partially outside the guide catheter and partially inside. The most um, likely cause for this was that we did not prepare the vessel well. Therefore, after having gone through this process, we then perform multiple high pressure balloon inflations to prepare the vessel. And then we had uh, no difficulty delivering stents all the way from distal to proximal, covering all the way to the ostium, obtaining a nice result. 
we then performed IFR afterwards to confirm that the results were accurate, were adequate, and indeed the IFR afterwards was 1.0. The patient had an uneventful recovery, and he has not had any current chest discomfort during three months of follow-up. It took about an hour, 12.6 uh, minutes of fluoro, 0.35 gray, and 90 ml of contrast. There are several potential lessons here. The first is that poor lesion preparation. In this particular case, we did not prepare very well the instant restenotic lesion in the proximal right coronary artery. It can lead to stent deformation and then stent loss by trying to retrieve the deformed stent that cannot deliver back into the guide catheter. As a result, if one feels resistance pulling the stent back into the guide catheter, one should resist the temptation to pull harder because that's when the stent comes off and then it's much, much harder to retrieve. An alternative option is to advance the stent back into the vessel and then try to retrieve it, moving the guide back or changing the guide orientation. And in the worst case scenario, if this is not possible to get the stent back into the guide, another option is to, re to retrieve both the guide and the stent without putting the stent back into the guide catheter. Of course, that leads to loss of distal guide wire position, which may not be a good idea in some cases, but may be a good option in other cases. The second lesson is that if stent loss occurs, we should not forget that retrieving the stent is just one option and deploying or crushing is another very good option several times. In this particular case, retrieval was preferred because the stent was partially inside and partially outside the guide catheter. Therefore, it would have been hard to get the stent completely into the vessel and be able to deliver it, deploy it, or crush it. If retrieval is decided, it is important to know the techniques. The small balloon technique is the easiest and um, requires less equipment, just a small balloon. If it doesn't work, one other option is to trap the lost stent inside the guide catheter and then withdraw both the guide catheter together with the trapped lost stent as a block. Thank you.